Hello everyone, I'm Gopinath Jia from Eco Central School of Engineering. I work, I work as an assistant professor there. It comes under the Mahindra University. It's located in a place called Hyderabad in India. So my research work relates to the application of the various nonlinear Kalman filter based techniques for the sensorless PMSM drive. So here in this work, we are presenting alternative implementations of the cubish Kalman filter for the sensorless PMSM drive. And we are trying to propose one modification of the speed control loop for improved dynamic performance as well. The PMSM can be modeled uh, in the rotor reference frame for control purposes, wherein all the variables become DC and it's easy to have designed the controller for them. And for developing equations for the observer, it's better to use the alpha beta reference frame uh, where the output equation becomes a linear model. But in the DQ reference frame, the output equation will be a nonlinear model. So it's better to have a linear model for the output equation. So that's why we use the alpha beta reference frame uh, for developing the stochastic observers. And the basic torque equation uh, relating the generated torque, the load torque and inertial part and as well as the coefficient of friction. So that gives the plant transfer function for developing the speed control loop. And the reason behind using the stochastic observers or uh, the obvious uh, reasons being that the inaccuracies in modeling can be very easily accounted by the modeling noise where it can account for the saturation effects and dead time effects, slot harmonics, switching frequency and some slight variation of parameters as well. And any noise in sensors and signal processing can be accounted by the measurement noise. And the implementation of the filter becomes very easy because of the recursive nature of the filter. And the optimality criteria is nothing but the minimization of the estimation error covariance. And all of these stochastic observers are derived based on the basic Bayesian estimation formula given here, where the a posterior rate probability is uh, derived from the, uh, the a prior rate probability using the two step process of use, uh, the prediction step and the update step, where the motion model and observ observation model are used. And if you go with the analytical approximation of the Bayesian estimation, we come to the extended Kalman filter and if we apply the statistical approximation which is more accurate we get to the uh, unscented and curvature Kalman filters which are perfectly uh, non-linear Kalman filters. This is the speed control loop. This is a total a complete uh, closed loop system of the proposed PMSM uh, drive, sensorless drive. Uh, so we use the Cubature Kalman filter in its square root version as an observer for uh, finding the speed as well as position. And uh, the speed control loop is designed using the PI controller. We are not using PID control because of the added complexity of the derivative term that we will have to have one more extra parameter to be tuned. So by using PI controller, the tuning becomes very simple and we can use the analytical method of tuning. And whenever we use a PI controller, there is an inevitable overshoot that we observe in the speed and torque. So if we try to uh, reduce the overshoot, uh, we can see that the disturbance rejection property becomes very uh, very uh, reduced. So we cannot have a good disturbance rejection as well as reduction in overshoot of speed that we will be seeing in the next slide. So we have proposed a reference modification term uh, here denoted by HFF. So the reference modification term simply tries to negate the effect of the zero introduced by the PA controller. So PA controller consists of the pole at the origin and one zero located by the, PA, the given PA parameters. So the reference conditioning term which we have proposed tries to negate that particular effect of the zero thereby uh, making the closed loop uh, transfer function equivalent to a standard second order form which is presented in the next slide. So as we can see by these equations this is the open loop transfer function using the uh, sorry the closed loop transfer function using the PI controller we can see here that there is a zero introduced because of the PI controller here and if we want to convert this into the standard second order form. So we have proposed that uh, the reference conditioning term where uh, the effect of this particular zero is cancelled by the pole of the reference conditioning term. Thereby we get the closed loop transfer function with that particular uh, reference conditioning term to be this. So the reference conditioning term being a pole, so it is just like a low pass filter, but it's not a random low pass filter. The low pass filter corner frequency is located just to match the zero introduced by the PA controller. So here uh, these uh, simulation diagrams show the inevitability of the trade-off between uh, the overshoot and the disturbance rejection that I was uh, referring to. 
So if we can see here that if we try to reduce the overshoot in speed by increasing the phase margin, so thereby making it a, uh, approximately first order response, we will see that it will deteriorate the disturbance rejection. So here this, this black line gives the, uh, the uh, speed for uh, the phase margin set at 90 degree. So this, this lower figure is for a step change in load torque when the uh, speed of the motor is some, uh, somewhere constant at uh, somewhere around 500 rpm. So this uh, figure here, it denotes the uh, step change in reference uh, speed when it's set from 0 to 500. So this is the uh, response of the uh, machine for step change in reference speed. So from these two figures, we can see that by reducing the phase margin, we will be deteriorating the disturbance rejection property. So some overshoot is inevitable. So we have to set the phase margin somewhere around 75 degree to have a, a decent overshoot, but as well as a good disturbance rejection. So the present work relates to the reduction of this overshoot as well by, by using the proposed reference conditioning term. So here we can see that by using that reference conditioning term, which is synthesized as a low pass filter. So the, this, gives, this particular figure gives the comparison of the PA controller based system and the proposed system. So this inevitable overshoot in the speed can be reduced by using the proposed modification as seen by this particular blue curve over here. And the same thing is given for the torque as well. So for the PA controller, we see that there is a huge uh, uh, overshoot in torque in the initial transients that can also be reduced by using the proposed modification for the PA controller. And uh, some of the uh, equations that we have used to develop the PA controller parameters come out of the basic angle condition at 0 dB crossover and the magnitude condition at 0 dB crossover. And the when we analytically see the improvements that we have achieved, we see that the speed can, the overshoot in speed has been reduced to about 15% and the overshoot in torque can be reduced to 45% by using the proposed uh, modification of the speed control loop. And for all these uh, uh, loops, uh, the speed, uh, uh, the bandwidth, the open loop bandwidth is set as 200 radian per second for the speed control loop. And for the current control loop, it's set at 3750 radian per second, whence the phase margin is set to 75 degree in both places. And these are some of the analytical uh, expressions that have been derived for comparing the conventional PA controller and the proposed modification using the reference conditioning term, which is nothing but the low pass filter term. So by looking at these uh, equations, we can see that, that the peak overshoot in speed will be this particular uh, whole equation for uh, the, uh, the conventional PA controller. And the orange uh, shaded one gives the same uh, quantity for the proposed uh, uh, speed control loop. And when we take, for example, zeta being 0.7 and work out the, uh, the overshoots in speed and torque, we can quantify that there is a reduction of the uh, torque overshoot by 15% and speed overshoot by 45%. And for purpose of estimation, so until now uh, I have discussed about what is our contribution in this work regarding the dynamic response. So the improvement in dynamic response, how we have achieved by using the reference conditioning term. So henceforth, uh, I'll be discussing what is the contribution of this work in terms of application of the cubasher Kalman filter. So the scheme, the two schemes that have been studied here are, so one scheme being that where the currents and speed along with the position are estimated. And in the other scheme, the load torque is also combined, uh, combined in combination with the states, uh, the load torque is also estimated. So what are all the relative merits and demerits of these two schemes will be the next work that we'll be presenting. So the, coming to the basics of nonlinear Kahneman filters, so they, they avoid the linearization that is inherent in the extended Kahneman filter. So that leads to some errors in the linearization itself leads to errors. So by using the nonlinear Kahneman filters, we can reduce that errors as well. And uh, some of the nonlinear Kahneman filters are the unscented Kahneman filter widely used. And nowadays the cubation Kahneman filter has become very widely used as well. And uh, in all of these nonlinear Kalman filters, the propagation of the sample points happen through the nonlinear equations itself. So that makes it more accurate. And all of these uh, Kalman filters go with an averaging uh, of the uh, points when we have the different cubature points and the, the sigma points spread around the, the mean. So the average, they, they average out for the whole uh, distribution and we get the 
the estimated uh, uh, state and the error covariance. And these are the equations by which the UKF and CKF approximate mean and error covariance of the nonlinear function. And the basic difference between unscented Kalman filter and Cubasier Kalman filter is that around the main point in the unscented Kalman filter, we have 2n plus 1 sigma points. So the, the number of sigma points is 2n plus 1. So around the main point, we have the sigma points located. And for the Cubasier Kalman filter, the number of uh, Cubasier points, so called Cubasier points, is 2n, where n is the number of states. And in the uncentered Kalman filter, higher weightage is given to mean, but here equal weightage is given to all of the Cubasier points. So the implication of this being that in the UKF, so any initial mismatch may eventually lead to the divergence of the filter, while because equal weightage is given for all the Cubasier points, any initial mismatch will sort of average out for the Cubasier Kalman filter. So here and there are extra parameters to be tuned for UKF, but there are no extra parameters to be tuned for CKF. So whatever tuning we used for EKF, which is traditional, the same tuning uh, methodology can be used for CKF as well. That's one more important aspect of CKF. And the non-stable implementation of square root algorithm. So the UKF square root algorithm is supposed to be non-stable. But for the CKF, we will see here that the, the, the square root algorithm will be very stable. And if at all the sigma points are negatively weighted, so that can lead to the non-positive definiteness of the error covariance matrix P, which doesn't happen with the Cubasier kalman filter by using the square root algorithm. And uh, yeah, as said, the, uh, the square root algorithm, instead of propagating the error covariance matrix P, it propagates the, the square root of the error covariance matrix, thereby avoiding the positive definiteness, uh, thereby avoiding the uh, non-positive definiteness, and it will retain the symmetricity of the error covariance matrix. So the reason for non-positive definiteness that has been seen in the literature uh, can be traced to very accurate measurements and some linear combination of state uh, uh, vector com uh, vectors where some of them are known with very high accuracy and some are not known with very very, very high accuracy. So mathematically, they correlate the uh, non-positive definiteness of P to these two reasons. So this can be avoided with the SCKF. And the SCKF usually uses the pure decomposition. So and the SCKF is numerically stable. And we have found out in our work that if at all we are using the basic cubature Kalman filter, when we try to apply for load torque uh, combined load torque estimation, it was diverging. So we cannot apply the basic cubic Kalman filter for combined load torque estimation. But the SCKF allows the combined load torque estimation as well. That is one outcome of our work where the SCKF is used for the combined load torque estimation, which is not possible with the standard CKF. And why do we need a combined load torque estimation? That can be seen from the next few slides. And this gives the basic algorithm for the SCKF, which is a pretty straightforward algorithm. And coming to simulation results, I would try to relate that point where why do we need a combined load torque estimation relating to this particular simulation results. So when we go with the Kalman filters, we do not have the proper estimate of what their bandwidth is because they are they are stochastic, they are not deterministic observers. So, so to find out the bandwidth, so an, an indirect methodology is suggested over here, wherein the, the control loop bandwidth can be progressively increased, kept on increasing and at some point of time, it hits the bandwidth hypothetically. It will hit the bandwidth of the observer, supposedly, and then there will be disturbances in the speed response. So that can be set as the bandwidth of the observer because the bandwidth of the observer has to be more than the bandwidth of the control loop. So the, the methodology we are proposing is to keep increasing the bandwidth of the control loop where hypothetically speaking, if it hits the bandwidth of the observer, we will see that as some this ripples in the speed, which is very much evident when we do it with the cubasier Kalman filter here. So with along with the load torque estimation if at all we include the load torque estimation and again try out this methodology of increasing the controller bandwidth we can see that we, that we can go to very high bandwidth of the speed control loop as seen by the second uh, uh, response uh, the second figure over here that the the bandwidth of the speed control loop is increased to 1000 rpm to, sorry 1000 radian per second so even with that increase of the bandwidth of the speed control loop we see that there are no ripples in speed so this is the reason why why we are by using the load torque combined load torque estimation is more advantageous than just having the estimation of speed and position. And that is possible only while using the SCKF. So this is not possible while using the CKF. So this is one more advantage that we have found out in this particular work and reported in this work, wherein the SCKF can be used for improved uh, uh, the combined load torque estimation and that will lead to an improvement of the speed control loop bandwidth.
and the improvement of the speed control with bandwidth needless to say results in a very low settling time and the fastness of response coming to the experimental results so we have worked uh, uh, this out, out on a matlab real time matlab using the ni dac card uh, and we have found out some of these results so we are comparing the the, the reduction in overshoot using the the pi control this this gives the uh, the speed response for a step change in reference speed the speed response uh, reference uh, the speed response using the conventional pi controller and this particular figure gives the speed response using the proposed uh, speed controller with reference conditioning so we can see a considerable decrease in the the overshoot where by, by, by uh, but the settling time almost is uh, unaffected so we have retained the settling time but we have reduced the overshoot in speed by using the reference conditioning term this is the experimental setup we have used in conclusion so a speed controller is uh, uh, proposed here for reduction in overshoot of speed and torque wherein we have seen that the reduction in overshoot of speed to 15% and torque to 45% can be achieved and augmented load torque estimation using the SCKF algorithm can be used to improve the bandwidth of the speed control loop. So this can be possible only using the SCKF algorithm without uh, the C, just the CKF algorithm. And some of the algorithms have been tested using simulations and experiments. One thing that's uh, yet to be done is to implement the SCKF for combined load torque estimation. The implementation, experimental limit implementation shown is for uh, without load torque estimation, but we found out that with load torque estimation, the complexity of the, uh, the computational com complexity became very intense. So the, the system was hanging, so it, it couldn't take the uh, computational complexity. So we had to devise some improved methodology to, uh, to, uh, to implement the SCKF in the uh, digital format. So that is one thing that uh, one work, ongoing work that we are trying to achieve. There are some of the references that we have used. Thank you for listening.